Now let's talk about the audit. Like I said, audits are the major source of potential problems and liabilities for accountants. So we should talk about what the auditor does. In a general sense, auditors verify a company's books and records. Pursuant to laws and regulations, audits must be conducted by a certified public accountant. Traditionally, auditors were the watchdogs for management. Their job was to detect or anticipate financial problems. As the public ownership in stock increased, that accountant is not only the watchdog for management, but also watchdog for investors keeping an eye on management. Now, one of the important roles of an accountant is to serve as an independent evaluator of the financial statements issued by management to investors and creditors. The CPA must review the company's financial records, check their accuracy, and otherwise investigate the financial position of the company. But as you can imagine, it is impossible to check each and every transaction. So they conduct a sampling to verify the figures contained in the client's financial statements and verify information from third parties like bank accounts, contracts, and account receivables. In performing their duties, an accountant must follow the generally accepted accounting standards, also the generally accepted accounting principles, and a failure to do so can result in a cause of action of negligence or malpractice. They're one of, they're one of the same. Those terms are used interchangeably, negligence or malpractice. After completing the audit, the auditor renders an opinion as part of his or her report. The opinion indicates how accurate the financial statements reflect the company's true financial condition. The auditor's opinion may be unqualified, qualified, or adverse. Let's start with the unqualified opinion. It's also called or known as the clean opinion. It states uh, a finding that the company's financial statements fairly represent the company's financial position and financial condition and conforms with the generally accepted accounting principles. This opinion is the most favorable opinion that an auditor can give. A qualified opinion indicates that the financial statements are fairly represented, but there is an outstanding unresolved issue whose impact might be uncertain. This could be something like a change in accounting principle or a violation of an accepted accounting principle, or maybe the company is facing some sort of violation, like an environmental law violation or an OSHA standard. And if that is the case, the auditor must note in his or her report whether or not the, an issue it exists if they are issuing a qualified opinion. The adverse opinion provides that the financial statements do not fairly represent the company's financial position or does not represent the results of operation or they do not conform with the GAAPs. Um, this kind of reflects material misstating certain items on financial statements that's suggested in the adverse opinions. So this is not an opinion a company wants to receive from its auditor. The auditor can also issue a disclaimer of opinion. Basically here, the auditor is unable to draw a conclusion about the accuracy of the company's financial records. This is generally issued when an auditor lacks sufficient information about the financial records to issue an overall opinion. Most auditors give an unqualified opinion. A company that receives an opinion other than an unqualified may not be able to sell its stock to the public, merge with another company, or obtain loans from banks. The Securities Security Exchange Commission, they've actually issued warnings against shopping for accountants that give out a favorable opinion. But certainly accountants don't just want to give out favorable opinions just for the sake of doing so because they can be held liable not only to their clients but to third parties. And in our next video, we're going to discuss how accountants can be held liable to their clients.